things you can get on Amazon. These ones are perform better. That's my favorite band. In my opinion, the best quality of these mini bands or Versa loops that you can find. Okay. Green is a good medium. Yellow is pretty light, pretty easy. Blue is pretty tough. Red's in between green and blue. There's a black that's really hard. So these are a great tool. These ones, you can get a six pack of those for seven to 10 bucks on Amazon. These you can get for like 20 and you can get two or three of them. And it's a hip circle. It's made out of fabric. And so it's a lot more comfortable and it's wider. So it doesn't dig in as much as those. They both have their applications. The Versa loops you can use for a lot of other stuff, agility work, footwork, drills, different things. And um, they work in certain uh, corrective exercise, physical therapy applications. But this is still another nice tool to have. If you only have those, use that. But if you can get one of these, then uh, it's definitely worth it for helping to activate the glutes, especially if you have trouble in that glute activation, glute medius activation, abduction, extension, hip flexion, opening position that we're looking at for like squatting or basically everything using your legs, right? Trying to build a good strong foundation. A lot of people have a problem activating their glutes. So this band will help to help you to activate your glutes because it's using a principle called RNT, reactive neuromuscular training, where you're essentially putting information into the body via an external stimulus, okay? The band being the external stimulus the force that it's putting upon the body at this position is the information going in. The information going in is saying, hey, something's pushing on our legs. And that's just like a constant, imagine like a, those closed loop circuits where you touch it and the light goes on and you untouch it and the light goes off, touch it and the light goes on and it stays on. So this by touching his knee is constantly keeping a light on, going to the brain saying, hey, your knee's collapsing in, hey, your knee's collapsing in. So it's helping the brain to remember that it needs to do your cue in using this is to coach the person to do the opposite of what the band is doing because the band is going to send information in saying collapse in collapse in collapse in and that's your cue to oh yeah that's right i have to fight the band i have to avoid collapsing in by pushing out and activating those muscles so it's a tactile cue tactile physical touch cue that sends information in to help remind you to go against the band, fight against the band, because that's gonna be the desired position we're trying to get your body in and activate certain muscles that will get you to that position. So the, this band puts you in a position that forces you to open your knees. It's like a clamshell, a very common sport or physical therapy movement, if you guys have seen it. That's what this is mimicking. It's that abduction position, abduction external rotation that's gonna help to, or well, that's controlled by the glutes, so the more an external rotation, all this stuff around the hip. So if we can activate this stuff, then we can get stronger here that will put us in a better alignment with everything else. So we're not only getting the glute maximus that works on pushing the hips up and forward into extension, we're also getting more of an emphasis on that lateral glute slash hip stuff when we add the band because we're forcing them to exaggeratively activate to compensate for the fact that we're putting the band there around the knees, causing them to collapse in. Okay, so now we're gonna go toes straight, everything the same about the glute bridge. I want the feet to be hip bone distance with the parts so we've got toes in line with ankle, in line with knee, in line with hip. We want the knee to stay outside of that big toe. So this is gonna try to force him in, and I'm gonna say, fight that band as hard as you can. If you break it, I'll train you for life, for free, okay? So if he breaks this band, then he wins. So he's, he's trying to break that sucker as hard as he can. Okay, foot bones stay aligned. He's trying to come up onto the arches of the feet. He's pulling his arches into the ground because he's gonna drive his heels to his hips when he does this to help him curl himself up. So the only major thing I want him to do is focus on driving his knees out. Everything else about the curl up, the glute bridge itself stays the same. He's gonna start from the bottom of the spine and curl all the way up, but he's gonna open these knees as much as he can. And I'm just gonna cue him and say, okay, that one's outside. Second digit, I'll take that. That's barely outside second digit. Maybe push a little more out to the left. Okay, yep, that's looking good here. Good, looking good here, keep it open. Now on the way down especially, the eccentric, you wanna really push out as hard as you can as you come down, curl down. Yep, push that rib cage down. Push the middle of the back down. Yep, yep, keep the tailbone and the hamstrings up, curl those heels into the glutes. Low back pushes down before the butt cheeks touch. Good, knees open, knees open, knees open, and down. Good, same thing. Yes, turn this foot in a little bit. 
Knees structure, knees out, especially this one. Good, knees out, good. Okay, and come up. Yep, use the arms to assist as much as you need. If the arms make it too easy, we cross them across the chest. It's your call, wherever you're at. Control, technique, muscle activation, more important than what movement you pick out of all of them. The wise man picks the one that's best for him. So don't just look at the sheet and go, well, that's the hardest one and I'm tough. Or I haven't worked out before, so I can't do any of these. Maybe you have some of the people that don't work out have some of the better movement patterns because they don't get trained on how to move shitty by some person, some fitness specialist, okay? That doesn't know anything about movement and then actually causes more problems for them later. That's pretty common, so focus on technique. Think about flexing your muscles and isometric contraction. Okay, it's the, these are just tools to help us contract our muscles. All right, give it one more. Turn this toe in. Knees out. We're just using this band as a tool to help him activate muscles more. We're just using kettlebells as tools to help him activate muscles more. Bands, gravity. But it, the whole idea is you have to send information from your brain, electricity from your brain to the muscles to say, work, turn on, work, grow. That is an intentional request that you have to deliver to the appropriate areas in your body to get the muscles to grow, to get actually strong and better at movement. You have to consciously focus on doing so. Good. Okay. Now, I'm going to have him do it on the box as the progression to this. So if you have a band, you don't have to necessarily do the body weight versions if you already have control there. You can jump right to the band. Again, go with the progression that feels good for you. He's been doing every one of these progressions, so his ass is on fire right now. But this is gonna be our last one, and it's on the box with the band on. Yes, just to answer a question I know I'll get later, can you do the glute bridge march with the band on as well? With these VersaLoop, with both of them you can. With these ones, it's definitely more annoying. With these ones, you don't get very much range out of it, but it definitely still does make the exercise A, more difficult, and B, technically more effective by getting that opposite engagement, that contralateral engagement through the hip flexor of one leg and the hip extensor of the other leg, but I digress. So I'm going to have him come up on the box and he's going hip width apart with his feet, turn that toe in, turn toe in more, yeah, and then this foot's actually going to scoot in about, yeah, a little bit more. There you go. I'm lining his heels up with his knee, with his femur bone, the head of his femur bone and his hip, okay? That one's actually pretty good. This one needs to turn into a little bit, yeah. Okay, now keep these here. Don't let these move, but make those knees spread and give me a couple curl ups. Use as much of the back of the arms as you need. Okay, so he's in good position here, making sure that his knees stay outside of his toes. Abs, wrist down. Yeah, yeah. Each, every time you do that, you can feel it. Ooh, that force distributes instead of pushing up out of your belly, the force goes whoop and comes to the back, right? You can feel more glutes, more push from the hamstrings. It's like you're trying to touch your heels to your hammies. Turn these toes in. Yep, keep those knees driving out and keep those toes in. Yep, good. That's tough. That's real tough. Reach down, especially when you cross through that mid back. That exhale will help you engage the muscles that encourage thoracic flexion. That thoracolumbar region where the bottom of your rib cage and top of your low back meet, you want to really try to control that flexion down through that position by compressing your core. And exhaling will help you crunch the accordion, as I call it. It will help you emphasize that pushing because you're trying to push the force down towards your hips, down towards your hamstrings. Because if you go up here, then the force goes whoop, whoop, and that means it's going out your spine in that position. You're leaking force out that thoracolumbar junction in exaggerated slash passive, in a sense, extension. So if you exaggerate active flexion, you'll help to resist that exaggeration on that hinge point, which we don't want hinge points, and you'll help to get more control of that lumbopelvic hip complex.